Welcome to the nightclub guys. It's your host night wrencher now today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set up your MSD 6014 LS, LS series box uh, I believe that you can take the same steps to put in uh, the 6010 and the 6012 um, MSD boxes. I did get the 6014. I have an unboxing video of that if you guys want to check that out so you can see everything that comes included. Um, it's a pretty basic setup. I've got, uh, it comes with two main, hor main harnesses and of those main harnesses you got a couple of auxiliary um, wires. I believe the pink ones for RPM. One's for data logging and then one's for something else. I, I forgot what it was for, but for my uh, purposes, uh, I'm not going to be needing those, uh, at least not right now. Uh, then you got your uh, power and your ground, uh, red and black, and those go directly into your harness. Those wires come up. I have them going through the dash and then under the dash. So you're going to want to uh, ground out the ground. I have it set up right behind the dash right there if you can see the two little screws those are ground points uh, a nice clean ground that make sure you have ground um, if at all possible get it as close to the battery as you can try not to get it like going through too many panels because uh, interference um, and noise is a problem so you don't want um, something like that to get in your way the next thing I have is the red wire the power wire and this is just going off of a, um, a 12 volt ignition uh, one thing you do have to do, I mean, you don't have to do it, but I mean, I ran it without it for a while, but what I have here, I have it, as you can see, I have a little wire that says uh, PCM next to it, and because of that, uh, this is actually going, this is a fused line, so if, uh, what for whatever reason, this thing falls off, contacts the transmission, makes it short, the fuse will blow, and I've got a, I believe they recommend a 7.5 amp, but I've got a 5 amp in there right now. Uh, I believe it's the uh, it's this orange one in my busman uh, relay box. So I've got that that set up. The reason you want to set up a uh, a relay, I mean, I'm sorry, a fuse, is uh, so you don't have any kind of like uh, anything after the fuse is protected. So in case uh, you have rubbing inside your dash or something, as soon as instead of uh, frying every like your entire harness, it'll only fry. Um, Whatever is contacting it for a split second and the fuse will blow and then you won't have power But at least you your harness will still be intact if you keep blowing fuses That means you probably have a, a short somewhere and you got to find it. So It does really help out not only when troubleshooting, but also to protect your circuits You don't want to accidentally short something on this side and then blow your PCM um, You do want to keep that uh, protected so those harnesses I got them running through the side of the um, the side of the cab and then into the floor I was gonna run them through the firewall but they were gonna look a little ugly ugly on that side so I, I decided against it so I have them coming in from under the floor and then I still need to tuck these away but they're they're chilling here they come in from the back of the block and then to the carburetor so you got a you got a couple connections in the back. You have the um, the cam sen the, the yeah the cam sensor, and then this goes on to a, a uh, like a mini harness. So here's a mini harness, and then from that mini harness you got the cam sensor, and then there's another wire that comes on the side of it that goes to your crank sensor. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but here's the harness for it, and your crank sensor is right behind your starter, and then. On the second set of wires, that's where all your um, coils are. So you've got you got this little bundle of wires right here, these ones. So you've got one harness that goes out to your coils, another harness that goes out to your coils. You have the connector for your uh, coolant temp sensor right here. You gotta know that uh, your coils um, use the factory harness that you would on your regular LS um, harness and then you just plug in this connector um, right off the, uh, the MSD harness and it'll plug right into your your coil harness I can't get it out but it's a brand new harness uh, I don't know what that means but it's got everything it's really nice I tucked it under uh, under my manifold 
just so I wouldn't have any wires up here getting in the way. So I tucked it, everything's under my manifold. You can't really see it from, from the outside. Let me zoom out a little bit or at least walk back. So you can't really see any kind of wires except for that connector for the coil and then you have your alternator. The alternator, you're gonna need to wire it separately. Um, there's no MSD provision for that. Um, uh, that comes with the kit. You can buy like a little Holly connector or another type of connector that comes with the resistor and the pigtail and then you just um, you just follow the instructions to to wire that in yourself you just have a little I believe it's like a 10 gauge wire that goes from the alternator to wherever your junction box is I have mine in the back and then you have your your sensing wire that also goes to a 12 volt but it needs a resistor in line so you don't overcharge your batteries and overheat the the alternator so for your LS um, it takes a standard four barrel carburetor um, I've had an Edelbrock on this and it has worked and then I've had different types of Hollies and they've all they've all worked um, if you're wondering for fuel system I'm using a, a TBI fuel pump um, this one is a deadhead regulator you probably want to get a flow through regulator because a deadhead is just going to blow up your pump I converted this to a flow through but it's not you know it's not I'm not using it the way it's supposed to be using, so I don't know if this is actually going to help me or hurt me in the future. But this was a uh, pretty pricey. But don't buy yourself a deadhead if it's a carbureted system and you're running an electric fuel pump. Don't don't use a deadhead regulator. It works and it starts up, but um, you know it's just one of those things. So I'm going to show you guys what it's like when I when I set it up. So I've actually got to um, uh, yeah, it should be on fuel. And then I got, I don't have the ground for this. Everything's all Jimmy rigged right now. But I have driven it. Uh, I think in the previous video, I drove it out on the, um, out on the street. So, and it, it drives really well after you, you tune the carburetor a little bit. It does tend to, um, run pretty well. Um, uh, so let's see, I've got the, uh, ignition switch. So this is your switch power. You can hear my fuel pump. You can maybe hear my fuel pump. I don't know. And then on this one, this nice fat red wire that I have, this goes to my fuse box, directly to my fuse box. And then from my fuse box, as soon as the key is on, MS, the MSD box will have power. Now the reason you don't want to wire the MSD box directly to your battery is because you won't be able to turn it off. Without a switch, you won't be able to turn the engine off. So you need um, switched ignition power for the box so you can turn it on and off whenever you need to and then you're gonna need your ground which is what I have here so this is what the fuel pump looks like after it's running so this is I've got a this is the the feed and then this is the return and I just put a little filter on the return just so I can monitor and make sure what the fuel conditions like and uh i don't know i just like knowing that there's uh there's fuel going back and there's not no problem and then i just have the feed line that goes to the carburetor and then as you can see it's reading three psi so that's what i've got it set at um i actually have it controlled uh not by the regulator but by this hose clamp so you block off the return uh, just enough so you can start getting enough pressure. You're going to hear it in the pump. If you block too much, you're going to deadhead the pump and it's going to go to max pressure and you're going to have a lot of problems. I ended up having a lot of overfueling issues um, when I over when I um, just hooked it up directly and uh, it was just a lot of problems that you don't want to deal with. So there's that. And So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is in the tank. So for the tank... I've got the, the regular feed line here, and then I've got these return lines. So I've got, um, this used to be the vent line that would go to your, your vent for the, for this guy, for your filler neck. So I ended up, instead of it going directly to here, I teed it, I teed it off, and now you got fuel that comes here, and then it'll either, when I, when I have the cab up, this thing's going to be up higher. So it, it's not gonna, the fuel's not gonna stay here. 
but it's going to either go this way or it's going to go back into the tank and then on the evap line that's where i ran the new wire for the the fuel pump because this was a, a mechanical fuel pump then we got the built-in ground and then we have the the sending the sending wire and that's all jimmy rigged as well too so it's all on a fuse so i'm not really too worried it'll just pop the fuse if anything happens so there is that so everything's running right now so i can just you can just give it a couple pumps and it should start right up so one last thing i have is uh i have my wide band going right now that one if you guys are interested i'll put that in a separate video and if you guys want detailed instructions for the fuel pump i can put that in a separate video but just let me know so one more time of the switch key on fuel pumps running msc modules powered up my wide band turns on and then i just and then to turn it off easy and this will also work for when you set up your your alternator especially if you set it on the ignition side of the circuit because it's a mechanical switch and as soon as you turn the key off the alternator will also shut off so everything will shut off together which is the beauty of having the switch so that will go ahead and do it um it wasn't a very complicated video but i hope this uh is able to help someone in the future if please like comment subscribe just you know you guys know what it is so i'll see you guys in the next one night rancher out